Hey pals, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna talk about lessons from bats. And you might be thinking, okay, well, Mike, I'm interested in health. Why do I care about bats? Well, in this context of this COVID-19 pandemic, I want you to understand that bats are actually, they can coexist and they can get infected with the, the SARS-CoV virus and actually fare quite well because they have a unique coping mechanisms that, that have evolved presumably and, and selected for over years. And so I want you to understand how this works and understand kind of the pathophysiology of the disease in humans and how bats have a unique protective mechanism. But first, just wanna welcome you back. I am Mike Mutzel, very excited that you're here. I wanna just clarify, I'm not an immunologist. I'm not an infectious disease expert. Uh, I do study immunology extensively. I wrote a book called Belly Fat Effect and we talked a lot about metabolism and immunity in this new emerging field called immunometabolism. So if you're interested in that, I would highly recommend that. But let's just dive into the studies and I will show up some screenshots here. There's been some scientists that have been looking at this for a very long period of time. And it's pretty interesting how the bats are able to surmount an over-exaggerated immune response, which is actually per some of the scientific studies and case studies that have been emerging from Wuhan, from Italy, and from the United States, is the reason why many people eventually will succumb to the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus and the disease known as the COVID-19, the coronavirus, human coronavirus disease. Um, so essentially our immune system, it, it, because of this virus ability to quickly invade our cells and take over cellular machinery, and due to the really over-exaggerated immune response that our body creates, um, there's a lot of friendly fire from our own immune system. So our immune system really freaks out because this virus is quickly able to get in there and cause some damage. It's that friendly fire, uh, the cytokine storm, interleukin-6, interferon, uh, interleukin-17, a bunch of different cytokines. Um, and the analogy that I kind of have been helping people, you know, to better understand this is imagine if you're having a picnic, okay, on this table. Here's my uh, living room. My daughter just walked by. Uh, and let's say there was a fly on, on, on the countertop, right? If I were to use a sledgehammer to get rid of the fly or the mosquito, there would be a lot of collateral damage. Well, your body and your immune system is essentially doing a similar process when the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus is infecting the cells and your immune system freaks out. Now here's how bats are able to mitigate this. Bats are able to keep this inflammasome signaling hub reduced. It's called the NLRP3 inflammasome. Now I know for some of you, this is getting a little bit technical, so let me just back up. In our body, we have molecular switches, uh, even in the immune system. Just like you have a circuit board on your computer or in your house, you have the, the main switch panel, right? For example, okay, when I, when I turn the Wi-Fi off, other things in my house will, will turn off. Well, Essentially, what bats are able to do is like turn off the Wi-Fi that's able to dampen the immune response. So while the virus is still infecting their cells, the immune system is not be having this over-exuberant response, which is causing a lot of collateral damage. Okay, so now let me just make this a little bit more clear because some of you who have been listening to this channel are interviews over the years, which I will link below and put right here with Dr. Zhang Ro. He's an MD, PhD in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, and then also um, Dr. Dom D'Agostino, we've talked extensively about the NLRP3 inflammasome in the context of the ketogenic diet. So it's been known, at least in animals, that ketones, the main ketone that you measure in your blood, beta-hydroxybutyrate, it can inhibit this NLRP3 inflammasome. Now, I just want to offer a little disclaimer. I'm not in any way suggesting that the ketogenic diet is a cure for human coronavirus. I'm just saying it's something we should consider because right now, People are buying vitamin C, glutathione, vitamin D, vitamin A. The purchases for supplements and, and natural solutions, uh, the behavior is just crazy. People are buying all sorts of stuff and I understand people are scared. I just want you to remember and realize your liver, when you're in a state of ketosis, can make up to 150 grams of ketones per day. And if the animal model data is true uh, and translatable to humans in physiologic levels, it stands to reason that there is certainly no harm in being low carb during this period of time so that you can reduce your body's baseline levels of inflammation. Again, I'm not an infectious disease expert and immunologist. I'm just sharing with you some of the research that's emerging from different fields. Because unfortunately in science, the right hand doesn't talk to the left hand. The immunologists, they hang out in immunological circles. Uh, the metabolic endocrine people, they go to obesity week. They hang out with their own crowd. And there's sometimes not a lot of crosstalk. And the point of these videos in this channel is translational biology. I like to help you translate, help you understand what's going on in all sorts of different 
uh, research specialties. Okay, so again, we have this metabolic therapy that could potentially affect the immune system that would be beneficial in this particular context by just keeping our baseline level of inflammation low. And again, the beta hydroxybutyrate made by your own liver when you exercise, when you fast, when you embark on a low carb ketogenic style diet, or you take MCT oil or, or ketone supplements, BHB has been shown, at least in animals, to reduce this NLRP3 inflammasome signaling hub which at least in bats is offering some sort of protection from excessive inflammatory responses in the context of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So I know that's a lot of science for you. I'm very curious to see how you find this information. I don't want to elaborate on all these scientific pathways and charts and, and, and everything like that. But I think this is a really unique teaching moment this is top of mind. I mean, this virus pandemic has shut down the global economy, schools are out, everyone's out of work, like it's scary time. And I don't think it's gonna be the last infectious disease that we will be exposed to in our lifetime. So I'm using this as an opportunity, and hopefully you can as well, to make diet and lifestyle changes. So these things stick, so that we're more resilient as humans, both metal metabolically and immunologically. Again, because this field of immunometabolism which is the coalescence and convergence of two seemingly disparate fields. Infectious disease experts normally don't talk a lot about diabetes. Diabetologists and endocrinologists don't normally talk a lot about infectious disease, but guess what? The mechanisms and the data is showing that these two systems are constantly cross-talking, and that's why in other videos that we've talked about on this channel, uh, individuals that are overweight, they generally tend to get more influenza and upper respiratory tract infections. Individuals that have diabetes also have a lot of chronic inflammation and reduced immune system responses to infectious disease uh, and much more. So these fields are connecting. So what you're doing from your dietary standpoint is affecting your immune system, which is top of mind for many people. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Sorry to ramble on about some complex biochemistry, but I think it's important that you understand this stuff. This is being talked about in various research circles. I'm trying to get interviews with these scientists to share with you their perspective. I'll let you know more about that. But if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, you probably should do so so you don't miss out when we launch new videos like this or interview experts or go live. So please subscribe and thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on a future episode down the road. Bye now.